Uh, if you don't mind, just say your names and get as close to the mic as you possibly can when you say your name and tell me, just tell me your name and spell it. <laughs> My name is John O'Ellison. It's J O H N O E W L I S O N, and I'm 28. <laughs> and I'm looking for the perfect. <laughs> and I've been an alcoholic. So <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sense of humor and bubbly personality. <laughs> Likes name. long walks on the beach but doesn't want to pay for them. Looks right. The, the smell of. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, Lee? Yeah, uh, my name is Lee Purnell, uh, L E I G H P U R N E W L. I'm 24 and I also like the sea. <laughs> okay, and Paul? My name is Paul Archer, P A U L A R C H E R, and I'm 24. <laughs> and I'm uh, open to uh, any anyone, anyone at all. <laughs> That's good because you're in Houston, Texas, and there's a lot of that going around. Okay, um, first of all, all right, tell me about this. How? What is this project? How did you get involved with it? Yeah. How did it start? Well, um, we were in the back of a taxi one night and uh, saw it was quite expensive when coming back from a night out and went, well, let's, that's really expensive, let's see how high the highest meter has ever been. And uh, we realised it was high, but we could probably beat it. Um, and looked on Guinness World Records and, and went from there. <laughs> were you completely drunk when you made this decision? We, we were pretty drunk at the time, yeah. We, we, but we weren't quite drunk enough that we forgot it the next morning, there which is, is the big okay. problem. That is the most important aspect. Yeah, unfortunately we remembered it and, and then we... We drove around the world for for a year and, and delayed our lives for it because of this stupid drunken idea. <laughs> well, that's what is good about the idea, right? <laughs> How did you start getting sponsorships and um, has it been difficult? At first it was pretty difficult. We just called up hundreds of companies and <laughs> basically said, we're uh, three stu students who want to drive around the world. Can you pay for it? And then <laughs> obviously pretty much everyone said no. But once we started to get a few people on board and more and more people came on board, and then once we were um, almost at the end of the trip, we were supposed to finish in Australia in uh, December, we, um, we got a new company on board called Get Taxi, which is, is um, a smartphone taxi ordering company. And they basically said, um, we, we'll pay for you to drive back to England. So is, is it like an app or is it actually a, um, a phone? Dialing? It's an app, yeah. It's a smartphone app. So you just press a button and it, it sends a taxi straight to where you are using like, GPS. Google Maps. And GPS. It's really easy to use, really useful. As you travel around, are you using actual maps or are you using just GPS or yeah mainly we, GPS well we've actually traveled the entire time without any maps yeah. because when we when we packed everything was going for some reason our, our maps and my walking boots didn't make it into the car so we we drove along with using GPS for quite a while and then we realized that we'd actually driven halfway across the world without any maps so we figured we got that far we're gonna see how far we can go without any paper maps and we've we've got this far and we haven't really got lost ever. I mean, yeah. you get a bit lost trying to find places yeah. in, in cities, but other than that, it, yeah. it's alright, we haven't found ourselves in the wrong country. It's nice point. to be able to speak <laughs> to uh, close. <laughs> we nearly went into Chechnya, that was... Uh, <laughs> it's nice to be able to speak to the local people, and now now that we've got the same language, and say where's, uh, yeah. what's the directions to this place, and they Makes can a huge difference, you. doesn't it? Um, well, but no great stories of it t sending you into a federal prison, or <laughs> accidentally into... You got arrested in Moscow. <laughs> that was. We found that. It's we a very hip thing to do right now. That's what all the cool people do. That's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a couple of times we, if we maybe if we had better maps, we would have known that we were camping in the wrong place when we were in Iran, and we accidentally camped in an artillery range, um, which was probably not the best move we've ever done, and we got detained by the secret police and everything for that because it's kind of kind of a sensitive. In our defence, though, it was dark. It was dark. <laughs> it was dark. It's 11 at night, we've been driving all day. <laughs> you wouldn't notice the giant artillery guns next to you. Uh, yeah. Are you all on British passports? Oh, I've got an Irish one. Does that make a difference? It's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Irish don't piss everybody off like the English do. So. Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> As you go through the different places, how has your welcome been? Um, Texas has been amazing really friendly um we've i'm i'm amazed by just um how kind of nice nice it is to look around and how welcoming everyone is um because i think sometimes in the uk there's a bit of um sometimes a bit of a negative negative stereotype about the midwest and the south um but here it's just been brilliant everyone's been great we've had the 
sort of reception we've had from Texans has been incredible. They're they're very different to Californians, so we say we spent quite a while in California because we were fixing a car up there yeah. and getting to Texas. It's it's like coming to a new new country. Oh, yeah. uh, it's probably for the better. They're these pretty cool people. We like them here. <laughs> But it is different, though, isn't it? Very different. Do they treat you differently because you're English and Irish? I mean, seriously. Yeah, on the West Coast, we've especially, we found that um, our accents um, just made people go out of the way to help us. It was brilliant. Um, and here in Texas, I guess it's maybe not quite as it's quite as strong an effect, but it's just like being in a different country, I guess. Oh yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty strong. I'm, I try and put someone with a British accent on at least once a week on the na- on the week <laughs> news, and they always. I mean, no matter how stupid they are, they always say, "Oh my God, it's, they are so smart." That's you because know? we are that smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Taxi cab idea on yeah. a drunk. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, I would say that there are plenty of people who would rather be doing that than being on the dole or having no work at all. So yeah, well, you're right. It, yeah, because we did actually work before we left as well. It wasn't like uh, real jobs. Yeah. We, oh yeah. We were like what? Um, he, he unfortunately was. Uh, I was in sales. A, <laughs> a recruitment. He still <laughs> is. I got bad news for you. He still is. Um, and me and Jono both worked in the engineering sort of sector. So. Yeah, it, we we had jobs for eight months, but we knew we were going to quit them. So, um, especially Paul went out of his way um, to get a, quite a bad job, so he w- didn't feel guilty when he just yeah. quit. So he saved the pull of cash. I, I went, actually went into my performance review, and he started to tell me. <laughs> I, I said, "Before you start, I've got to stop you. I'm, I'm kind of going to quit to drive around the world." <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, <laughs> yeah, he wasn't yeah. too happy. But we knew we were going to do that for about three years, so uh, we'd already prepared ourselves, yeah. um, and we'd, at that point, we'd already got enough sponsors to sort of make it feasible. But we still had to spend most of our money on it as well. So, okay, well, I want to talk more about the commercialization of it. Um, I saw on one of your Facebook messages that somebody had specifically said, you know, since you've gone over to the stage, you've become more commercial. How do you feel about that? Uh, it's absolutely true. We have done that. Um, because originally we, we did this all off our own backs, as we said, we earned the money for it. We had a few really, really supportive sponsors who just loved what we were doing and they, they got involved. But we reached the point where we're in Southeast Asia, we had a few issues in, in Central Asia where we got stuck. We were stuck about two months behind schedule, which meant we were running out of money um, by the time we got there. We weren't really sure what we were going to do. And this company, Get Taxi, got involved and they basically said, well, you know, we're going to fund you guys not just to go to Australia, but to go to Australia, across the States, and then back through Europe to England. And the opportunity that that presented was just too good for us to turn, up, turn down. Sure. So, so we, we took it. But as part of that means that we are um, uh, obliged to help out Get Taxi, which isn't really a, an issue because it's, it's kind of a cool company. It's a, it's a smart app which works. And they're, they're rolling out all over the all over the, the world basically and we're driving all over the world so it, it, it does the both both what we want to do the, what they want to do and what we want to do kind of allies allies quite well but admittedly we have kind of we have sold, sold out, out <laughs> to the but man I mean, at, at the end of the day they're paying for us to do um, and they're a business and they're paying for us to do to give us this amazing opportunity so we we're grateful of that I know we have sold out a little bit and we, we do struggle with yeah. that a little bit sometimes but it's it's more the fact um, a lot of people it, it is driving and it's um it is it's very fun it's better yeah. than a nine to five job but there's it's also a lot of work um you do you're always constantly as soon as you get a, a internet you're on working typing emails typing letters getting all that sent off and then the car breaks down every day <laughs> every <laughs> single day if you can pick a part of that car and name it i will tell you it's broken I, the, the only thing that hasn't is the actual engine and that's because it's built in japan so. oh that's funny um Let's talk about the car a little bit. Uh, is is it diesel powered? What is it? Yeah, diesel. Uh, it's a, How big is the engine? It's only two point seven. It's about eighty horsepower. So what do you get into the gallon? Twenty five, something like that. Twenty five miles a gallon. Like you've been traveling around and seeing all sorts of different kind of prices as yeah. for gas. What's the highest you've paid for petrol? Turkey. Probably Turkey. Because uh, problems are everywhere in the world does it by litres. Yeah. Um, so like yeah, yeah, yeah. Two dollars a litre there? Two and a half and up. More. It's more. It's double it's and a half. Three dollars or well, it was one eighty one pound eighty seven, wasn't it? Something like that. So oh, yeah, and you had to go back to pounds. Someone came up bucks. to us at the fuel station, um, I think it was yesterday, and said, like, um, uh, how are these high, high gas prices hitting? And you're just <laughs> laughing <laughs> at them, right? Yeah, okay. we were like, this is a third of the price we paid back in Europe. Yeah. I think the most we paid was about 
12 bucks a litre, 12 bucks a gallon. China, no, when we had to siphon the the truck diesel. Um, in the middle of Tibet, yeah, the bottom of Mount Everest, we had to just um, get some from a truck driver because there was, was no insane. fuel in the whole region. Oh, yeah. So we just had it's to like siphon four. out his truck with a, with a tube. And you saw, like, We'd pay him, but we didn't just see yeah, it. It was, it was probably no. about 18 bucks a gallon. Oh, of course it not. It was quite a lot. <laughs> Have you had any problem beside uh, getting the right kind of diesel? Um... Um, in Iran, it was quite hard to find it, um, but also in the US, um, it's not that common, especially yeah. in the city. It's not too bad on the freeway because of the trucks, but right. um, yeah, we've just got to sort of um, plan ahead a little bit, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Iran was quite hard because um, everyone runs on petrol, except for the trucks. Same same as here, really. Um, everyone, there's not many people who use diesel. So. Yeah. But it was about, I think, about 50 cents to the gallon there. Or less, probably less in Iran. So you kind of yeah. you can't find it, but it's actually you kind of it's all right. <laughs> Miles to kilometers. Any problems with that? Are you seeing more? Uh, did you see in the United States enough conversion signs as you were traveling around? Uh, well, we actually use miles in the UK, so we're okay. um, for distances, so we're used. To You're it. okay with that? Uh, when we were out of Tucson, we saw some signs in kilometers, which yeah. mixed us up a bit. But yeah. <laughs> But, um, it's no. Arizona. It's very confusing. <laughs> With basically a nation of Native Americans in it, and the Native Americans. Did you go through any of the the? May have, uh, no, we, we didn't. Uh, Navajo Nation. We would have just driven straight through. We didn't actually stop, unfortunately. It's it's bizarre. It's like stepping back in time and going into a new paramilitary type of situation. Yeah, they they really? like their oh, guns. Yeah. They like their yeah. guns a lot. It's very different. It's the Queen's Jubilee. Does any, has anybody asked you in the slightest about the Queen's Jubilee? No, no one has yet. Actually, it's in uh, June. No, oh, no, no. It's, oh, well, always, it's, always, thinking, it's already happened, that, that. but it's always celebrated in yeah, June. Yeah, yeah. So we, we're going to be back in time. We're actually arriving back at the beginning of May, mm. just in time for us to celebrate the Jubilee. Yeah, we so saw uh, the royal wedding when we were in Turkey um, <laughs> last year. And found an English pub called the Georgian Dragon or something. And, um, went and got drunk with some um, British expats. The cheesiest <laughs> bar in the world. It was... The most fun expats in the world are always the British expats. There is no question about that. They do enjoy their drink. Yeah, they do. Yeah, are you going to Austin to South by Southwest? No, no we just came from Austin, but uh, missed it. Just oh, you're there. just not yeah. thinking. Oh, yeah, this no. is the problem. We were gutted when we found out. Because we probably missed it by about three weeks, I think. It's next weekend. It's next this, weekend. This weekend is my four-day festival here in Houston, and the next weekend is the Austin South by Southwest, and it's, you know, well, okay, meet him in France is fun, but South by Southwest in Austin is just an absolute blowout. It was yeah. the first Absolute. thing we, we looked up when we found out we were going to the States. We found out when South by Southwest was yeah. in Turkey. That's was quite bad. Oh. Bad luck. Absolutely bad luck. At least we managed to see the radio, though. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mutton yeah. busting was worth yeah. it all. You know, maybe maybe <laughs> South by Southwest isn't anything compared to mutton busting. Seeing college kids I'd grabbing I'd say it's the same cops. thing. I mean, you know, yeah, woolly grabs and drunken louts. You got it all. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just Texas right there. Anything else you want to say to our listeners about your particular goals? Well, um, we we we're raising all the money for the Red Cross, um, so both at home and abroad. Um, so all the money goes to charity, which is what we're aiming for. Uh, everyone can look online. Um, if you just 